Hey, future respiratory therapists. So coming at you with another video, BiPAP based question. I put a video up not too long ago talking about BiPAP and how you make changes on BiPAP to address ABG results. And the question today comes from that video, which by the way, I'm going to post right up here. There's a link to it right here. Okay. So click on that link if you haven't seen the first video. Because this is a continuation of that ventilator, ventilator, that, holy smokes, in that video, this is a response. Because I had a question from that video that said, hey, if you're in BiPAP and you have, let me, let me double check here, and you have, what if you have an oxygenation and ventilation problem and you're on BiPAP? Okay? And that's a valid question. Okay, the video I did earlier was how do you fix oxygenation problems on BiPAP versus how do you fix ventilation problems on BiPAP. But it didn't ever address what if you have both. Okay, so we're going to address that now. Okay, I also just happened to get a comment that said, um, hey, love your videos. I've also shared this with my preceptors. And <laughs> I would love, I would seriously love to know what your preceptors come back at you with when you say, I've been watching this guy, his name is Respiratory Coach, he's on YouTube. You know, I, I would really love to know what their response is because I know my response as an instructor and my response as an instructor is whatever it takes for you to be successful and to gather these concepts that I'm trying to teach you, then go seek it out. But I also know the mindset of most college professors. And most of them are not so open to someone else breaking down a concept in 15 minutes that it takes them two hours to break down. And they still have crappy test results. So I'd like to know what your thoughts are. I'd like to know, I'd like to know what they say. I'd like to know what they're like, oh, that's awesome, keep doing it. Or if they're like, well, that guy, you know, blah, whatever. I don't even really care. I'm just here to help you guys. And I hope you understand that. I hope you appreciate it. And I love the interaction I have with you guys. I feel like every single day it comes to more and more to life. Like, I'm over here answering your questions. But I seriously feel some odd connection with you guys watching my videos. And I just want you to know I appreciate you. I love the fact that you watch them. I love the fact that you give me feedback. I love the fact that you ask questions on top of videos. I just, I just love the whole arena. And I'm just here to help. So um, let me know what your, what, your, what your preceptors or your professors or whatever they're saying about the stuff that I'm putting out there. I would love to hear their interpretation of what I'm doing. I'm just doing what's right, guys. Fully confident in the knowledge that I'm sharing with y'all. So keep watching. Keep staying tuned. And keep asking questions the way you are. Okay? Because I appreciate it. Now, let's get back to the question. Okay? Talking about BiPAP. So we're talking BiPAP. Is the conversation... But the conversation is on BiPAP, you have one, an O2 problem, and you have two, a CO2 problem. So you have an oxygenation problem and you have a ventilation problem. This is a simple answer. You just got to understand what addresses what when you're talking BiPAP, okay? The difference between EPAP and IPAP is your pressure support. That's what's going to augment your tidal volume. Your tidal volume is what's going to augment your CO2. So if you increase pressure support, then you increase tidal volume, then you increase CO2 removal. Got it? That's what we're talking about. So when we say CO2, the answer is increase Pressure support in equals increased tidal volume. 
equals increase minute volume equals decrease CO2. It's literally that simple. Okay? But this question is a little more complicated because this question says, but we also have an oxygenation problem. So we have an oxygenation problem and a ventilation problem. So you need to address two issues. So we've already said that this problem, okay, will address our ventilation problem. If we have an O2 problem, you need to increase your PEEP which in this case is your EPAP, which is your in non-invasive ventilation, EPAP equals PEEP. So you need to increase PEEP, okay, to fix your oxygenation problems. If you increase EPAP, then you increase PAO2, unless you can also increase FIO2. You don't need to keep increasing EPAP if your FIO2 is at 30%. Bump them up to 50%. Bump up the FIO2. It doesn't become an issue until you start getting to 70, 80, 90, 100% FIO2. Then you go, shit, I'm, I'm screwed. Like, I'm screwed. The patient's screwed. Everybody's just about screwed right now, right? That's where it becomes a problem with non-invasive ventilation. There's, not, there's nothing wrong with having a patient on non-invasive ventilation that you can effectively oxygenate at 50% with an EPAP of 5 and, a, and an IPAP of 15. If that fixes everything, then run it like that. If that doesn't fix it, now you got a problem, right? Okay, so let's talk about it like this. Let's talk about it. We have an oxygenation problem and a ventilation problem, which means we have a low O2 and a high CO2 causing a decreased pH. I don't care about high CO2 if my pH is normal. I care about a high CO2 when my pH is below normal, and you should only care about it then also. So I'm going to erase this, and we're going to talk about it exactly, right? So I'm going to give you a scenario. So you have a patient with... Increase CO2, decrease pH, and decrease O2. This is a ventilation problem. This is an oxygenation problem, correct? Your patient is currently on BiPAP. 10 over 5. Let's go 40%. Okay? Now you have a couple of different options here. How do you fix the high CO2 while fixing the low O2? And the answer is simple. You increase your EPAP, and then you subsequently increase your pressure support. So right now, we have a pressure support of 5. 10 over 5 is a difference of 5. So right now, your pressure support is 5. Okay, so for me, what I would do is I would increase this patient. I would keep them on BiPAP, and I would increase the EPAP to 10, and I would increase the IPAP to 20. Okay, now what we've done here is we've increased EPAP from 5 to 10, that's going to increase our FRC, it's going to increase and improve oxygenation, it's the same as increasing PEEP, okay, so we've addressed our oxygenation issue, and we've increased our IPAP from 10 to 20, now, why didn't we just go to 15, because if we increase our EPAP to 10, and we only went to 15 here, then our pressure support would still be only 5. But we already know that we need to increase pressure support to increase tidal volume, to increase minute volume, to decrease CO2. 
So we got to increase our pressure support. So by increasing our IPAP to 20, our pressure support, the difference from our IPAP, from our EPAP is now 10, and you have a bigger tidal volume. The patient now has a more effective tidal volume, which will result in a greater removal of CO2, which will, regret, which will result in an increase in your pH, and you'll address both the oxygenation problem with the ventilation problem, and your patient will get much better, much quicker. I hope this helps. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you didn't, leave me a comment. Be sure to hit the subscribe button. Also, if you haven't done so already, watch my initial video over non-invasive mechanical ventilation, also known as BiPAP. I'll put it in a card right up here in the top right here. Hit this link right here. It'll take you to that video. Watch that. Because if you haven't watched that one and you're unsure about what I just said, then that video is going to make it all make sense. Okay? Best wishes, guys.